Welcome back to the Naked Mormon History Tour here. Right now we're standing outside the home of Jacob Hamblin. Now, Jacob Hamblin is a bit of a mythical figure in Mormon history. He's quite a compelling man, and he was responsible for a lot of diplomatic trips uh, to the Native Americans. Now, of course, such an individual is going to be surrounded with all kinds of ridiculous folklore and whatnot, and stories that are not necessarily believable, but he was quite a powerful individual, and if not for him, then things may not have gone quite so smoothly for the Native Americans as they did, you know, the, the Native American and Mormon relations. The story is that Jacob Hamblin was a member of the Tooele Militia, the northern Utah militia up there, in tasked with handling the Native Americans, but he got into an altercation with a Native American tribe, him and his, his troops, he was a commanding officer of the, the Mormon militia, and in this altercation, Jacob tried to fire his gun, and it didn't go off. And at the time, the Native American who was, who was squared off with him shot an arrow at him, and it hit his gun stock as he was checking it, so it didn't hit, it didn't actually hit Jacob. And then Jacob tried to fire the gun two more times, and each time the gun misfired. And as the story goes, everybody in the militia, everybody's guns misfired. Not a single gun was fired that day. And Jacob, in the return with the, the native he was squaring off with, uh, took four arrows, but none of them actually hit him. One apparently um, hit his gun stock, one grazed the side of his head, another went through his hat, and one went through his satchel. Uh, no arrows actually hit him dead on, so he came out on top apparently. But uh, as the story goes, Jacob Hamlin took that as a sign that he shouldn't be dealing with the natives by force with fire sticks. He should be a diplomat. And as the story goes, the saddle, which you'll see pictures of here, the saddle has a an ammunition pouch hanging off of it, and he carried around his Book of Mormon in it because it was A, the proper size, and B, because that was all the ammunition that he needed. But we shouldn't mince words about who Jacob Hamblin was. Um, he was a very strong and independent person. He had a total of four wives and 24 children. Um, as from what I can tell, two, maybe three of his wives lived in this house and um, upwards of uh, 12 of his children at any given time may have been living in here. It was a bigger house than most of the other saints' houses. He was considered a, a Mormon nobleman, if you will. Um, he was one of Brigham Young's personal assistants and upon whom Brigham Young relied for taking care of Native relations. However, he was still a brutal man. Jacob Hamlin killed a lot of Native Americans. We, there's no escaping that fact, unfortunately. The Mormons killed a lot of Native Americans out here. But Jacob Hamlin was responsible for a lot of the diplomatic relations because fighting the Natives wasn't a sustainable model. The Mormons couldn't do it forever, so they had to build business ties with them. They had to trade with the Natives or the Mormons would die. That's kind of the, the broader lesson to take from here. We're living in a desert scape here. There's not much vegetation other than sagebrush, and you can't eat that. There's not much here except for the saints, and they're in, encroaching on the few natives that were living here. There weren't many sources of water. Uh, two rivers, essentially, were the primary sources of water. And because there isn't enough vegetation to hold it when there's a big rain, they get flash floods that come through here. And those flash floods, as um, one of the elders said here, one of the tour guides said, you wouldn't know that it came through except if it took something of yours. Because after two days after a flash flood, there wouldn't be any evidence of it. The rivers would be back down to their normal height. So, houses washed away. People died. Jacob Hamlin nearly lost his life in one of the flash floods. One of Jacob Hamlin's wives, Priscilla, she um, suffered complications, according to the tour guide, from one of these flash floods and died three years later. So, this was a horribly inhospitable place, 
And as I've said in a previous video, nobody wanted the Mormons here. The climate didn't want the Mormons here. But through perseverance and enough putting the nose to the grindstone, <laughs> we're standing on the farm of Jacob Hamlin, a revered individual in Mormon history. But as I said, we can't, we can't turn him into a myth. We need to understand who Jacob Hamlin was. He was a brutal human being who did what he had to do to survive. And it was uh, thanks to him and his uh, diplomatic relations, he was able to create ties and create business relations instead of fighting relations with some of the natives out here. There was a story, um, apparently he was a member of the Powell Exploratory Group, and that was good for the, the government Powell Exploratory Group, as well as for Jacob Hamlin, because they paid him in cash. That was a government contract. He made good money from government contracts. And... The natives came to respect Jacob Hamlin because after he was done with his uh, old western style shooting days, you know, cowboy and Indian style days, he turned over a new leaf and he vowed to never kill any more natives. I don't know if he ever kept with that. I, I don't know if there's evidence to say one way or another, but he did have, he did build up a bit of a relation with the, the broader Native American community. And he always wore a red neckerchief anywhere that he would go in these diplomatic missions. And that way the natives knew if you saw a white man coming with a red neckerchief, that's Jacob Hamblin, don't kill him. He's coming to trade. He's coming to tie diplomatic relations with us. And in the top floor of this building is Jacob's study, where many of these diplomacies and treaties were signed. He was responsible for signing hundreds of treaties with the natives. Some of them even happened in this building. I mean, he's an amazing individual. Jacob Hamlin is. He has many, many descendants. Some of you watching this video may even be descendants of Jacob Hamlin. Who knows? Comment. Put it in the comments section if you are. I'd love to talk with you. But of course, like and subscribe. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to follow us along on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon.com. And if you could pledge to support this journey, this um, Mormon history tour, it would be deeply appreciated. Thank you so much.